Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the book of Romans. Turning our Bibles to Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Many a times, this is a very misinterpreted verse wherein uh, we, 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 we hear that this expression is speaking in tongues, whereas, wherein the Bible doesn't subscribe to this thought. The Bible tells that uh, the Spirit himself intercedes with words that we cannot utter with unutterable words. So it's not tongues. But the Holy Spirit God is pouring his heart out in prayer to the Father. Like how the Lord Jesus poured out his heart out in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we hear, we see that three people are mourning or groaning in this chapter. The first person who is groaning is, a, is the very believer because this believer is struggling with sin. He is, you know, uh, uh, tempted and he is uh, knocked down many a times and yet he tries to, uh, you know, uh, dust himself and, and, and rise up uh, with the power of the Spirit. He is always grieving, saying, Lord, when will this battle be over? When will I come out totally out of the sinful nature? When will the power and the presence of sinful nature get extinct in my life and I will come into your consummate presence? So there is the groaning of the believer. And secondly, as we've seen, we've seen that there is the groaning of creation that is so uh, under the burden of the curse of God because of man's sin. And then thirdly, we have the groaning of the blessed Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit God is groaning. But you know why? He is groaning for a certain reason. And that reason is he is groaning for the glorification of saints. He says, uh, Lord, I want this person to be secure until the last day. And each and every day, the Holy Spirit God is working upon us and he's changing us. Day by day, he's showing us the greatness and the, and the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians and chapter 3 and verse 18, we see that the Holy Spirit God is showing us who Jesus is and then he is taking us to the next level and to the next and to the next. Day by day, he is transforming us. So this groaning of the Holy Spirit is a very beautiful encouragement for a believer because we know that in a believer's life, he is praying for himself continually any believer who is walking with the Lord will always face the tension of sin and self and Satan and the system of the world persecuting and fighting against him. So he is always in an attitude of prayer. Even in the highest joys that a believer enjoys, there is always a tear in his eye and an anguish in his heart wherein he is crying out, when, O Lord, will I come out of this? And this is one of the prayers, one of the almost the only prayers that we hear in Revelation also under the altar. The souls are crying out to the when, when will you redeem thy whole church? Oh, and uh, this is the continuous intercession of uh, a believer. And then we, there is the continuous intercession of the Lord Jesus Christ. He began in John, John chapter 17 in a, in a prayer that was audible to the disciples. But then after he finished his sacrifice on the cross and rose resurrected uh, in victory, he seated to intercede for us. And then the blessed intercession of the Holy Spirit. He speaks, he intercedes on our behalf so that we can be glorified. And that intercession is the greatest it for a believer. Our loving, living, gracious, heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the intercession of the blessed Holy Spirit. With groans and with burden to glorify us one day into your presence. Help us to depend upon the prayers of the Lord Jesus, the intercession of the blessed Holy Spirit. And upon our intercession, continual dependence upon thy grace. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen.